imagine, if you will, that contentious standing room only parent meeting on your new math program. I was in just such a room a year ago. The meeting ended, and I left feeling beat up and depressed. And I asked myself a simple question, why? Everybody in the room wanted exactly the same thing. We wanted our students to be successful in mathematics. And the changes we had made in our program were producing the best scores ever on the state test. Part of the problem is that we live and work today in the shadow of the stereotypes of instruction first established in 18th century America. The first American math textbook established the process of teaching mathematics as state a rule, give an example, practice the rule. In 1821, the inductive method was offered. Here, kids were supposed to work through a series of examples using concrete materials to discover and understand the rules. So within the first 50 years of this country's founding, the great debate was established. Should kids learn rules, facts, and procedures, or concepts of understanding? And how should that math be taught? The history of math education in the United States is a 200-year pendulum swing between these goals. In the 50s and 60s, we tried new math. The goal was for kids to understand the structure of mathematics and develop the habits of mind of mathematicians. We all know new math didn't stick, and the country went back to the basics. In 1989, NCTM began the standards-based reform effort. By the late 90s, those standards were under attack. The criticisms then were the same as they are now with respect to the Common Core. Parents expected teachers to tell, educators expected kids to think. In 2010, we get the Common Core standards. We think maybe the pendulum swing will finally end. Those initially well-received standards are now under attack from both the right and the left. Why? Why all the controversy? Usually, it's nothing but misinformation. Some people think the Common Core is a conspiracy. Okay? <laughs> Some people confuse standards with assessment. They confuse it with curriculum. They confuse it with instruction. And now all this misinformation spreads virally through social media. <laughs> Some of the famous posts that went viral include using the number line to understand subtraction, or the 10 frame to develop number sense. But in both cases, the objectors confused an instructional strategy with a mathematical standard. Our challenge is that teaching mathematics is a cultural activity. Most adults in America have experienced 2,000 hours of math instruction. This creates an expectation in their head about what effective teaching and learning is supposed to look like. But we didn't all grow up watching a doctor at work for 180 days for 13 straight years. So we trust the, the professional expertise of our doctor. And when she treats us with the most recent and effective uh, you know, protocol, we don't push back and say, oh no, use leeches, please. <laughs> well, so now this slide is crap, because you call it <laughs> We know the research, it's in principles to actions, and some of those research inform instructional strategies are post purposeful questions. Build procedural fluency from a foundation of conceptual understanding. And as Robert said, support productive struggle in learning mathematics. But we have to be careful how we describe these strategies to parents. Every parent understands productive struggle as long as it's applied to music or athletics. They all think their kid will grow up and be the next LeBron James or Taylor Swift through hard work, practice, coaching, corrective feedback, right? We have to communicate learning mathematics is no different but call it effort, not struggle. We need to communicate to people what mathematics literacy means in the 21st century. It means our kids need to learn how, why, and when. We need to seek equilibrium in mathematics instruction and learning. We need to stand up for standards in common. Fractions and decimals are not different in Maine than they are in California. There is no such thing as new math. There is no such thing as common format. But there are new instructional strategies once the goal is just to know how to do something, now the goal is to know why. So we use visual representations. We use meaningful algorithms so kids understand the mathematics. Know how, know why, and know when. There's no reason this should be controversial. None at all. We need to point out to our critics that math achievement, particularly at the K-8 level, is up. Okay, it's the, it is higher for our students today than it was when their parents were in school. Why would we go back to a period of instruction that led to lower achievement? My call to action for you 
is to make sure our, kid, our students learn how, why, and when. We owe it to them. We owe it to ourselves. We owe it to our country. Thank you.